Hey ladies and gentlemen, Steven here from Red Essence. Welcome back to another video. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be discussing three fantastic rose-based fragrances. So make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin the video, I do want to mention that all three of these fragrances will be part of my February bundle for the company Max Aroma. There are a lot of social media personalities who are on board, and every month I pick three fragrances that I think are worth checking out. So I'm always going to recommend fragrances that cater to my personal taste and fragrances that I personally love. For the month of February, since we're kind of approaching the springtime, and when I think of spring, I think of florals, and these are uh, rose-based fragrances, and rose is, of course, a floral ingredient that I love to wear right around the springtime, and I think that these three niche and designer fragrances actually do it very well in terms of using a rose note, but also a rose ingredient that is not feminine or anything like that, but I think is perfectly unisex, and I think all three of these fragrances smell fantastic. So I'm going to leave all the information down below to where you can purchase the bundle if you so wish. Now, these three fragrances, I thought to myself, I want to include some variety in this list. You know, it's very easy to put together a list of rose-based fragrances, especially from ones that I have in my collection. There are many that come to mind right away, but I wanted to diversify the list. I wanted to give three distinctly different smelling rose-based fragrances and also kind of describe a little bit what the characteristics of each one are so that if you're not a fan of perhaps a spicy rose, you might be a fan of the sweeter rose or the fresh or rose or whatever the case might be. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the list. And of course, when you do get your bundle from Max Aroma, it will come in 8ml travel atomizers, which look like this. And they are the lipstick style travel atomizers. So I guess I'll just open it up and I'll show you on camera. They are 8ml's and each one has about 100 sprays, I think, if I'm not mistaken. It opens up just like this. And uh, the distribution on it is quite good as well. So if you are interested, I again, all the information will be down below. So definitely make sure to follow through. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first fragrance that I want to talk about here is going to be a designer fragrance. And this is a fantastic fragrance. It's actually one that I've worn time and time again. And this one from the company Cartier is called Declaration Dune Soir. Now, I know there have been a few different versions. Obviously, Declaration is a fragrance from the company that has done very, very well, hence the need to create flankers, right? But I think with this particular fragrance, for a designer fragrance and the price at which you can find this one, I think it uses the note of rose so wonderfully. I really, really love this fragrance. It's one of the better fragrances that I have put my nose on, especially on the designer side. And it's a bit of a spicy rose. So I would equate the way that this one smells kind of a little bit to like Rose 31 by Le Labo, except it doesn't really have that cumin note. It's spicy, but in a different way. And so while the rose note that it uses comes across smelling fresh and organic, there's a little bit of that spicy element in there that I know is not necessarily going to appeal to everyone, but if you're looking for a designer scent that smells unique, this is really one of the more unique designer fragrances that I've had the opportunity to put my nose on. And I have worn it to work a few times, not more than once or twice, but both times that I wore it, it lasted a long time on my skin. It performed really well, and I really enjoyed smelling it on myself. So Cartier's Declaration Dune Soir is one of the rose-based fragrances that I would highly recommend that is also available at Max Aroma and is part of my February bundle. The second fragrance that I would recommend is one that smells rich, it smells expensive, it smells luxurious, and the rose that's used in here is very dense, it's very full, and it has a lot of life and personality to it. This is a fragrance that I've owned for a while now, and this one by Tiziana Terenzi is called Porpora. And I must say that the rose that's used in here is just so nice, so organic smelling. It's not as light as Declaration Dune Soir. This one definitely has a density to it that's a bit heavier than the one that you know, you'll find in this one. But I think as a rose-based ingredient, if you're looking for something a bit more opulent and something a bit richer and a bit more full in nature, I think you will prefer this one. And also another thing to be said about the longevity of this one, you are gonna get a few more hours from this one than you will from the Cartier. If the Cartier fragrance gives you about six hours, this one is gonna give you about eight hours. And so 
I think another thing to be said about this one is that I know it's gotten comparisons online with um, Portrait of a Lady by Frederick Maul. I completely see those comparisons. I think if you do a side by side, the differences will become a bit more apparent. But with this fragrance in particular, I must say I really enjoy the way that this one smells. I think it's a wonderfully put together fragrance. It does smell quite natural and it's one that it's more of a uh, photorealistic rose, if I can say that about it. So definitely check it out. Number two on my list is um, uh, Porpora by Tiziana Terenzi, and I think it also comes in a gorgeous red bottle. The last fragrance that I would recommend is one where whenever uh, rose is spoken about as a note in perfumes, this fragrance often gets brought up. And I know that Max Aroma also carries this fragrance. They have a really good deal on it at the moment and it also happens to be one of the fragrances that I included in my bundle and it's also the very first one that came to mind because it happens to be one of my favorites if not my favorite rose based fragrance and it also happens to be one of my favorite fragrances that this company has put out. Whenever I'm looking for a very natural smelling but very easy to wear and fresh citrus based rose fragrance out there not to say that the citrus is stronger than the rose in this one but the citrus accent just opens up the rose makes it fresher makes it livelier and makes it so much easier to wear this is definitely a fragrance that comes to mind and i have been wearing this one for many many years now i have purchased this one with my own money and if and ever if this fragrance ever runs out on me i will be going out there and purchasing another bottle because this is one that i enjoy so much and i'm actually quite lucky that I have the vintage formulation in my hand. So without further ado, the number one rose fragrance that I can't recommend enough is by the company Amouage. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you probably were able to guess it before I even brought it up, but this one is Lyric for Men or Lyric Man. So what you're mostly going to get from this is a very natural, and fresh smelling rose. I know a lot of rose ingredients out there and there are so many varieties. There's, you know, the Damascus rose, Turkish rose, um, there is Bulgarian rose. I mean, there are a ton of varieties on the market, but the rose that's utilized in this fragrance is definitely on the fresher side. And it just smells like a very lively, delicate rose petal but it also has this ingredient of lime. And I think it's the lime citrus in the opening that really opens this fragrance up, makes it a bit more appealing and easy to wear on a mass level. And I cannot recommend this one enough as a rose dominant fragrance. I love wearing this one. It's so fresh and bright and energetic. And it's one that I have recommended to several people out there who weren't necessarily a fan of rose based fragrances. And after they had the opportunity to smell it, they're like, you know what? Yeah, this is really not what I was expecting. And these recommendations are recommendations that I have been making for several years now because this is one that I've owned in my collection for several years. It's actually one of the first Amouage fragrances that I purchased. Um, and I think that that's evident by the fact that it has a plastic cap as opposed to the magnetic cap that some of the newer Amouage fragrances are um, having in their presentation. But if you are on the market for three fantastic rose-based fragrances, I would highly recommend that you check these out. These are fragrances that I personally love to wear. Uh, one of the newer acquisitions for me was the Cartier Dune Soir, and I actually did get this one from Max Aroma, so thank you very much for sending it to me. Uh, but the other two I acquired separate from Max Aroma, and like I said, I paid for this one. So I'm really happy to have these in my collection. And if you haven't had the opportunity to try these, hopefully you can pick yourself up my Max Aroma bundle. It is going for a good price, but I think that there are only five left in stock. And so make sure to act quickly if you are interested in getting your nose on all three of these fragrances. Now, of course, there are many other rose-based fragrances on the market. You have like Burberry Brit. You have, um, I know there's been one by Floris that I smelled a while ago that I really enjoyed. As I mentioned throughout the course of this video, there's also Rose 31 by Le Labo. But I really wanted to go with options that are a bit more accessible, that don't necessarily lean too masculine or too feminine but ones that are perfectly down the middle and I think that they're going to resonate with a large number of people but I also think that given what's uh, here in front of me we have a lot of really nice variety among them so this one is a bit more denser and chunkier this one is definitely very light and fresh and this one has a spicy yet airy element about it that I think can be enjoyed by a lot of people so there you have it ladies and gentlemen 
Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm also curious to know, do you have any favorite rose-based fragrances? I would love to know what your favorites are. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you've tried any of these fragrances and you wanna give a little bit of feedback or your positioning on them, I would love to know that as well. I always love to start a discussion down below. So go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could support this channel and what I've been doing for the past seven and a, a half years. I really does mean a lot to me all you need to do is click that red button in the corner and please remember to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon as well this way whenever i do upload future fragrance related content it will get delivered straight to your feed you never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads and of course that includes top threes or top tens just like this video unboxings giveaways reviews special guests interviews announcements and a whole lot more thanks again for watching i love you all and we'll see you in the next episode.